I'm not using technology or wearing technology. I am technology. This is a body part. It never comes off. It never stops. It's always on. My name is Neil Harbison and I hear color. I sing grayscale, so I, I see perfectly well, but I see everything in grayscale. Like people would say it's like an old movie, but to me it's just like a normal movie because all movies are in black and white. So I just see everything normal, but in grayscale. So I have a light sensor that picks up the color frequencies in front of me. Then it sends them to a chip at the back of my head that transposes these light frequencies into vibrations, and then these vibrations become sounds to my ears. I wanted to have a completely new sense, so that's why I tried to convince a doctor to have the antenna implanted in my skull so that I would receive vibrations in the skull that then become sounds. So it's a completely new sense and a new body part that allows me to extend color perception beyond human sight. It was a very magic moment to be able to differentiate colors. I remember the first thing I listened was actually the Windows logo, which was four different colors. And then I walked out the room and then I, I listened to a wall and I said, is the wall red? And everyone said yes. So uh, that was the first time I was able to tell the color of something. So it was a very, very special moment. It was like discovering the world again. So to me, these paints are sounds I can hear each color and I can actually also put them on a on a score like red is F, G is yellow, green is A, turquoise is B, blue is C, violet D and pink is E. My relationship between uh, culture and, and color is different from most of the people's. For example, red for most people is a violent or passionate color, whereas for me, red is completely the opposite. It's, it's the most peaceful color because col uh, red is the color with the lowest frequency, so it's the most innocent color. It's, it's, uh, it's uh, just really calm and very nice to perceive, whereas violet would be uh, corresponding to violence. Because violet is close to ultraviolet, which is the, a color that can actually kill us. So if we would all perceive color like this, we would have stop signs and traffic lights wouldn't be red. They would all be violet. I never relate color with happiness or with sadness. It's the combination of colors that create um, maybe happy uh, or sad chords. So a color alone, like yellow alone on itself, does not um, make me feel any kind of feeling. It's the combination of yellow with other colors that can make me feel in a specific way. So much for the visible rays, but there are also the invisible rays, such as the infrared and ultraviolet. My favorite color is infrared, which is a color that is invisible for the human eyes, but it's present everywhere. So it's a color that you can actually perceive in total darkness as well. And it allows me to know if there's movement detectors in a room, and it also detect, allows me to detect if there's any warmth as well. And as infrared rays heat and penetrate, they make a good substitute for the sun. Hey ho, hey ho. So if I want to dress in a cheerful uh, way, then I would dress in a C major. So uh, like uh, pink, yellow, and blue. If I'm going to a party, then I would maybe dress in a very, I, I could actually wear a song so I can, I have also designs of clothes that actually sound like a specific song, so I would wear maybe a music part of something. And then if I go to a funeral, I would probably go with a minor chord. Yeah, the hardest thing about um, deciding to become a star has not been adapting to the new sense or to the new body part. It has been adapting to society because people tend to laugh at me when they see me in the street or they keep asking me questions or they just uh, sometimes they even attack me. So it, it, the hardest thing is actually social acceptance. And this is one of the slowest process because in 2004, the reaction wasn't as different as it is now. It hasn't really changed much. Your skin is F sharp plus three and your hair is G minus 10. 
one of the things I really like to do is sound portrait. So um, each person has the color of the eyes, lips, skin, and hair, and these correspond to different notes. So I, what I like is to get close to the different faces and write down the different notes that I hear, and then I send them an MP3 of their face so that they can hear the color of uh, their own face. And it's interesting to see that everyone sounds different. Even twins sound different. There's always slight differences between face and face. So it's, it's exciting to hear the differences. Also, we realize that we are not black and white. So people that say they're black, they're actually very, very dark orange. And people that say they're white, they're actually very, very light orange as well. So we actually are sharing the exact same hue. And the only difference is light. So it's completely false that we are black and white. It's, we are all orange. So I'll send you an MP3 of your face, OK? <laughs> One of the first faces I listened to was Prince Charles when he came to Dartington College. And uh, I remember he almost sounded like a C major, so because he has like bluish eyes. And then yeah, the, the combination was uh, almost C major, so it, it sounded quite harmonious. That's one of the exciting things about creating sound portraits, that you might sound really, really good and you don't know it. I really like also exploring the color of cities because people tend to say that their city is gray, but I think it's completely false. There's no gray in cities. People point at a stone, they say it's gray, but if they look close, they'll see that it's not gray, that it's either unsaturated blue, unsaturated yellow, or unsaturated brown. So each city has its own colors. This area is actually one of my favorite ones because it's uh, very unusual melodies, uh, very unusual colors. So it sounds, uh, sounds very loud. So it's like a huge, big concert going on here now. London is quite harmonious because the, there's a lot of red. So that makes it, uh, there's a constant note uh, that you will constantly hear in London. It's red, red, red. So it's F, 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 wherever you go, you will hear the note F. Whereas New York is more G, between G and, and G sharp. There is no difference for me between composing music or painting. It's all the same. So uh, one of the last projects I'm doing is just uh, painting on top of uh, vinyls or records. And I'm painting the dominant sound of that track. So if a track has a lot of um, G, or, or if a track is in C major, then I will paint it in a way that it sounds just like the track. I think we're now in a transition where we'll become more and more used to seeing people wearing technology permanently, and then we will slowly start seeing more and more people ready to have it implanted. So in the 20s, we'll see more people with new body parts and with new senses. And I guess it's just a matter of time. <laughs>